The book of Genesis. Everybody, I've been preaching out of Genesis a lot lately, haven't I? Genesis chapter number 25. And for just a few minutes right after church, my wife would dearly love to meet with the ladies. God has birthed something. Hallelujah. When a pastor's wife has a hard problem getting a vision and getting something going in her spirit for women's ministries, she is a miserable woman. Something uncorked this morning. Amen, somebody. Did, I, can, can, did anybody besides me feel God move this morning in this place? I'm telling you, I felt the Lord. There we go. Well, it worked up here for me, and I can overpower it the rest of the way. Amen? That way you won't hear it. Genesis chapter number 25, look at verse number 29. The Word of God is going to show us something tonight. Genesis 25 and 29. Yeah, it may be time to clean the filter. It says, Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright as of this day. Esau said, Look, I'm about to die. So what is this birthright to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils, then he ate and drank, arose and went his way. Then Esau despised his birthright. I want to teach you something. Anybody want to be taught something from the Word today? How many of you have ever had to deal with discouragement? How many of you have felt like, what is the use? I am so tired, I am ready to give up. Either that or I'm going to choke somebody one. Have you, I mean, come on, let's be real, because I've been there. Either I'm going to give up trying or I'm going to choke somebody one. You know, as, as, as uh, Jerry Clower said, John said, shoot up in here amongst us. One of us has got to have some relief. There have been times in my life when I'm like, look, God, if you don't shoot up in here, I'm going to shoot somebody. You've got hey, you to let off some pressure somewhere. Discouragement gets a hold of us in different ways. And when discouragement begins to come against us, it is very deceptive and sneaky in how it works. Now, I want you to let's look at this. Jacob, uh, Esau had been out in the field. He had been, Esau was a hunter, and Jacob was the mama's boy. Okay? Esau had been out hunting. It said his daddy loved his venison stew, so he was a deer hunter. Woohoo! But Esau was stupid. I mean, y'all know that there's some stupid deer hunters in the world. If you don't believe it, don't wear orange and walk in the woods and see how quick they have your funeral. Bubba will shoot at anything that moves. Sometimes you, got, you, can't, you can't hunt with Bubba. Don't let Bubba on your hunting club. You have to kick him out. Esau came in from the field and he was weary. He was tired. And he was hungry. But he had been hunting and he had been unsuccessful because if he'd have killed something, he'd have had something himself to eat. He had been unsuccessful in doing what he set out to do. How many of you have ever been unsuccessful in something that you set out to do? What happens when you are unsuccessful at what you set out to do? Turn the fan off on that air conditioner. The switch is on. Turn it to auto. Bottom right switch, just push it to the left. We'll have everything but the lights on in here. Every, the light, we'll be in the dark. <laughs> 
he had been unsuccessful at something that he was known for. He had been unsuccessful at something that he set out to do, and he got weary. The Bible tells us don't get weary in well-doing. Okay, everybody understand that. You're doing the right thing. Just don't get weary in doing it. So what happens is, everybody stop trying to listen for the whistle. Listen to me. It's just, just, it's just I'll turn this thing down if we need to. Turn it off. But if you, if you look at what happens, he gets weary. And when he walks up, he smells something he desires, but that he really is fighting against in his own self. He wants something to eat. He's hungry. And so he says, please feed me. Something for I'm weary. And his brother said, well, fine, sell me your birthright. Now, I want you to look in two verses. It progresses from weary to look, I am about to die. He goes from being weary and hungry to almost to I'm about to die. What has happened? He has come in discouraged. And when you are discouraged, any time something that looks good and is put in front of you, it makes your situation look worse than it really is. And so you begin to believe that it's worse than it really is. And you begin to speak that it's worse than it really is. It begins to gain momentum. And goes from being tired and weary and discouraged to I now am despairing that I'm ever going to get out of the predicament that I'm in to the point now he is feeling like I am about to drop dead. Look at how discouragement has pulled him down. It literally is like he is a cat, is, is that discouragement is a calf wrestler. And it has jumped on his head and it's beginning to turn him to where he can't keep going. And discouragement begins to turn him into the ground and it has run his head in the ground. And now he feels like he can't make it anymore. Discouragement has ridden him down to the point where he has been depressed. And depression has to turn into despair. And despair now is seeking that and looking at everything is going to bring about death. In three verses, you go from verse 30 to verse 32. And he has gone from being weary to I'm about, he is saying, look, I am about to die. When you allow discouragement to progress in your life, somebody needs to hear me. You may have to give this to somebody else this week. But when you allow discouragement to progress and you do not stand up against it and bring it into check and tell it, I refuse to be discouraged. I will not be weary in doing the right thing. When you allow discouragement to go on unchecked, what happens is it begins to progress, progress very quickly. And he went from, de from discouraged to depressed to despair to the point of death. That was fast. you hear me? And what you find is then when he gets to the point of despair and he feels that he is going to die, look at what happens when your vision, when your thoughts, when your emotions get to the place where your, your mind is beginning to look at these things. You are willing to sell your birthright. You are willing to sell the rights to your future to whoever can bring relief. And too many times people have sold the rights to their future to some boy who would give them the love and attention that their father didn't. Uh, can I just go ahead? They, they'll, they'll give their, their money and their support to some soft-spoken preacher on TV because he made them feel good. And when you begin to sell your future and your destiny 
to the enemy of discouragement, despair, and destruction, depression. You begin to trade off, well, I will compromise my future for relief in my present. That's not a good exchange. He literally gave away the blessing and promise of the fruitfulness of his future for one bowl of soup. For some castleberries, beef stew, and a slice of bread. He gave away destiny. My God. A temporary relief of his immediate circumstance. He traded the rest of his tomorrows. Too many times the enemy discourages us and then gets us to look at everything that's going wrong instead of what's going right. And when we begin to look at what's going wrong instead of what's going right, we begin to talk crazy. And being tired goes to, I'm about to die and perish, and I might as well give up and just lay here. If somebody doesn't come by and help me, my future is nothing. If anybody can come by and give me relief for the moment, I'll give away my future for somebody that will make me feel better now. And the temporary relief that he received caused him to, be, to despise his own future. Somebody needs to hear me tonight. You need to break this generational thing that's on you. You need to begin to break the pattern of your life that has been on you because discouragement has come at you at every turn. And now you have gotten to where you have sold your future and given it away for cheap things and temporary things so many times that you are despising your future. You see that there is nothing in your future. You see that there's no reason for you to keep going on. You see that there's no reason for me to even try. You may know somebody who's in that boat. They say, what's the use of me and trying? Even trying because everybody's going to see me as the failure that I've been and they don't see any future in me. So why should I even see a future in myself but you've got to understand those are still the views of man and those are still the views of the enemy but God says I, I see the thoughts I know the thoughts that I have for you says the Lord thoughts to give you a hope and a future to promise to, to prosper you and to bless you and not harm you Amen. and too many times we listen to the voice of discouragement so therefore our tomorrow begins to lessen in our sight we begin to see destiny and the fulfillment of God in our lives as something that is so far away, then what good will it do me if I can't have relief today? This is totally different from this morning. God sent me by tonight to teach somebody something. There may be somebody in your family that is dealing with discouragement, that may be dealing with despair, and you need to tell them, listen, you don't need to give up on your tomorrow just because your today is not exactly right. It's time for you to understand you still have a future. God is still on the throne. God is still at work in your life, and there's no use in you giving up and throwing in the towel and say, I can't finish. I can't make it. I'm not going to be able to do it. There comes a point where you've got to make up your mind that you're going to finish it. You see, it wasn't that far. If he found his brother, how much further was it to the house? I'm going to bring this out right here. Somebody's going to get eat up on this one. Jacob should have just given him something. There's too many people walking around blaming the church. The church should just give it. The church should just give it. Hush, you're the one who sold yourself away for so cheap. You're the one who traded in the world tomorrow for the world. You're the one who traded in the blessing of peace and the presence of Almighty God because you carried a chip on your shoulder for what somebody did to you. God has not failed you. You failed yourself. She, amen. Thank you, Zoe. I appreciate it, honey. You just keep saying amen. Teach some of these folks is quiet how to say amen out loud. That people keep 
pointing their finger at God and at the church. At the church, well, that church should have done this, and that person at that church heard me. And you're going to hold God accountable for what man did, and you're going to hold the next pastor accountable for what the last pastor did, and you're going to hold the state overseer now uh, in ransom and and hold him in bondage for what the other state overseer did. You better get delivered from your past because as long as you stay attached to your past, you will despise your future. It said he despised his birthright. He despised what he was supposed to have from that moment on because he traded it all for something temporary. Anytime you begin to wheel and deal with anyone or anything and you're in discouragement, you better stop. Because compromise and discouragement go hand in hand. Somebody needs to hear me tonight. You cannot give in. You cannot give up and you cannot quit. It's just a little bit further to the house. And if Jacob won't feed you, mama will. Your daddy will. Our problem is, is that we are in a society that has the, East, the, the, the Esau syndrome. We need something right then, and we can't be patient. We can't persevere. We get weary and well-doing, and we want God to immediately come in and make everything right. And when God won't come in and make everything right, then we do whatever is necessary to take the pressure off of us, which usually means giving up on God and giving up on what we've been praying for and giving up on all the things that we've been asking God to do and then we sit down and we do nothing and we despise the condition that we're in because we gave up on what we've been asking for. Well, y'all don't shout me down. I've been there. You have to shake yourself sometimes. Somebody help me here. You've got to shake yourself. Sometimes you've got to walk up and look in the mirror and slap that person in the mirror. Some of y'all, that preacher's crazy. I have looked in the mirror and slapped the snot out of myself. Not in the mirror. I'm talking about laid my own. Wow. Right, listen, I'm dumb. Sometimes it takes some radical for me. I'm like Moses. I would have had to seen the burning bush, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> I need something radical sometimes. It takes drastic measures. Do you understand that Esau took the blessing of the firstborn? The blessing of the firstborn literally meant that his father would bless him with the majority of everything that he had, would bless him with all of the leadership that he had, would give him right to... Be the one who would do business and carry on the family name. And he just swapped off his father's name for something temporary. How often do we in the church swap off our father's name for something temporary? Some, ooh. You can't preach this at every church. They'll run you off. They'll run you off. You see, the thing is, is that we are, let, let's, uh, we're, Our society that we live in right now deals with immediacy. And whatever brings us the most immediate gratification is where we put our energy to. That's why people are so easily addicted to the Internet because it has a sense of immediate gratification. In either looking at how bad somebody else's problem is so you feel better about your own self even though nothing has changed. You know, just because, just because somebody else don't sin like you don't mean that your sin ain't right is right. <laughs> Hello? Well, I ain't in bad shape as it yet, but you ain't in good shape. Well, I'm not doing what so-and-so's doing, <laughs> but you ain't doing what you need to do. Instant gratification means that we have drive throughs instead of sit-downs. I'm from the go-in generation. 
I go in and look somebody in the face and shake their hands. My wife is from the drive through generation. There's only six and a half years between us. But my wife has a drive through syndrome. If she can drive through, she's going to drive through. Amen? She's going to drive through. Drive through the bank. They, I mean, and you think about it. How many businesses that used to be walk-in are now they've developed drive through I mean, you can drive through cleaners. There's drive through wedding chapels out there in Las Vegas. You just drive through and get married. You ain't even got to get out of the car. I mean, you can just pull up in your flip-flops. Do you know that they've even developed drive through church? You can drive up to a window and they will give you a five-minute sermonette and you put an offering in there, and you drive off, and that's church. Drive through church. The church harps on being debt-free and then begins to pick up credit card machines. And any ministries out there that that listen to see this, God bless you if you use a credit card machine. I don't believe in credit cards. I'm trying to close every account I have but one. And I got all them down to 0% interest, and I'm paying them suckers off. And when they pay it off, I ain't going to have no more. If I can't pay for it with cash or pay for it with my name, I sure ain't putting it on no credit card because them things are the devil. You put it in the mail four days early, and it gets lost and dropped, and it gets there one day late, and they jack the percentage rate up to 29%. That's the devil. You hear me? That's the parenting devil. Esau took his entire, the prom, listen, he took the promise of his destiny, the promise of his future, and traded it off for something so short-lived and temporary because he went from discouragement to depression to despair to thinking he was going to die. And it didn't take long. All because he had become weary when he was unsuccessful at doing what he set out to do. Spiritually in our lives, there are many times when we set out to seek God about things, and I'm going to grow, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And the first time there comes a setback, we forget what we set out to do just because we want to make stuff feel better at the time. That's not a good idea. Because anytime you become so short-sighted, and I'm going to end with this, when you become so short-sighted that the immediate becomes more important than the eternal, you better check yourself. mm, What did you say, baby? Did you just say that? That was good. It is. You've got to understand that the eternal... Is what you base everything on. Your destiny that God has laid out before you is what you base every decision on. Not how you feel at the moment. He was weary. He said, Look, I feel like I'm about to die. He's basing his decision. On feelings and not on the promise of his tomorrow, on what is eternal. And the majority of Christians get into trouble when they let immediate gratification override eternal fulfillment. That was good if I did preach it. I've been there. I got news for you. When you stop looking at eternity, and you begin to be consumed with the moment, the moment will override good judgment. Oh, y'all all all act like y'all all all saints. Y'all ain't never done nothing stupid in your life, have you? Bless, thank you, Jesus. I've got a church full of people who are super wise. How many of you have ever let the moment, the, the moment override your good 
God-given common sense, and you do something that your brain just comes out, and you just, you lose your mind, and you just put it down. Where did it go? I don't know where it went. Ooh. Well, good. While I've lost my mind, let me do something stupid. Ooh. Come on now. I'm not the only one. And what it is is you took your eyes off of Calvary. And you took your eyes off of the eternal price that God paid for you. And you took your eyes off of the eternal, resur- the, the, the eternal restoration that God put in you. And you took your eyes off the eternal fulfillment that will take place. Because you got a little discouraged and somebody didn't stroke your ego just right. And you had a bad day so you wanted to feel good about yourself. Or you did something stupid. Or at that moment, you just didn't feel like holding your tongue, so you just snapped. Come on, we've all done it. Mm. And we eat that bowl of beef stew. It might not even be Castleberry brand. It might be something that, that, that you picked up, but they don't even have a label on it no more. It's just got beef stew written on it and a magic marker on the top. Come on, because at the moment, the can was shiny. Ha. And at the moment, it looked like everything you wanted because you took your eyes off of where you were going. You took your eyes off of tomorrow. You took your eyes off of God's destiny. You took your eyes off of God's path for your life. And you started looking around, and the shiny thing drew you off the path. My Lord, somebody, get this in your spirit. Young people, you better listen to me. Shiny ain't always good. You, you, you cannot lose sight of what God eternally wants to do in you. Because we believe that there's going to be a resurrection one day. And the righteous will be resurrected to eternal blessing in the presence of Almighty God. But Esau threw away his future for a bowl of beef stew. And a piece of bread. Castleberries and a dinner roll. What are you trading off for? What have you traded off? Have, have you? Mm, mm, I wasn't going to go here, but the Lord has done this. Mm. Have you traded off your quiet time where God taught you how to be what he wanted you to be? For running around doing other stuff. Have you traded off reading God's word for the latest novel? And, and I, 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 I know it's one of my pet peeves, but I got news for you. If you spend more time with Twilight and Breaking Dawn and all this stuff and you do in your Bible, you got a problem. There's people that go to church that claim to be something wondrous that can tell you more about those things than they can about the prophetic passages of the Scripture. You better be careful where your temporary things are. This ain't no party message here. This is the kind of, it'll eat you up. How many now, because I've done it. I, I, I've come in and gone from weary and, and just feeling like I, you know, not appreciated to stupid, uh, just dumb, dumber than a piece of dirt. I mean, am I too, am I too honest sometimes? Am I too, I mean... Because I, I got news for you. I've seen some of you do it. <laughs> you ain't hiding it from me. <laughs> I'm weary. The next thing I know, you're dying. And you're, anything that will bring you a bowl of soup, anything, anybody, the devil, your own self, mm, y'all better stand up. It's going to get tough. Stand up. Come on. This, this, mm. Somebody need to hear tonight. You need to listen to me carefully. This is it. This is what you need to hear. You better stop looking at the temporary. And you better focus on the eternal. Because, mm, for good or for bad, 
if the things that you do in this life are only done for the temporary, then you are accomplishing nothing. Whether you're temporarily doing the right thing because you want to make a situation better, or you're temporarily doing the wrong thing because you just want to make yourself feel better. You know what Esau did? Esau got consumed with himself. He wanted to make himself feel better. And he did something stupid. If we want to make it to heaven, we have to be like Christ. Christ didn't make himself feel better. Christ sacrificed himself. God will take care of you if you just serve him. If you just trust him. Let's God come play something softly for just a minute.